Okay, got to prepare my review. I got to be ready for the camera. Come with me if you want to live. Come on me if you want to live. Come on me if you want to live. That's gonna be my new warming up tongue twister. Come on me if you want to live. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Ryan Wright. So today I'm not using my straight to the point set because you see this echo you could hear? I don't like that. I hate that bad sound quality. And it's significantly worse when I am shooting in the corner and the camera's further away. I'm gonna be getting supplies to make sure I can get rid of that echo before I return to the normal straight to the point set. But if you guys like this more, then tell me because this is way easier. All right, so I'm gonna talk about Terminator Genesis today. Or as a lot of film critics are saying it, Genesize. <laughs> that joke is so funny. So this film's been receiving a lot of negative criticism. You know, I've, I checked out most of the capsules on Rotten Tomatoes. I checked out Jeremy Johns' review. I checked out Schmo's No. While I do agree, like, largely with most of the things they said, there was actually nothing I really disagreed with, I still quite enjoyed the movie. Like, there's film, not perfect, full of many flaws. Then you got stuff in it that's good. <laughs> so, that stuff in it that's good, I enjoyed. But trust me, I'm very much aware. If you hear that, those are cats running around. Just got kitties. Also, a really important note, it's definitely better than Rise of the Machines and Salvation. Like, I really prepared myself when I was watching this movie because Terminator 2 Judgment Day is sometimes I consider it my favorite movie of all time. But I didn't want to let my love for that movie interfere with my viewing experience for this one to just try to absorb it as a standalone film because it's like different writer, different director. I know it's not going to be James Cameron style, so I'm going to try to just accept it as its own. Even though I did that, there's still a lot of flaws with it, but the stuff that was good like I said is good but there are things that yes as a fan of the Terminator series uh, especially one and two I do miss certain elements that I was hoping this one would bring back Genesis yes it's technically a dark film but the first two had sort of a like haunting menace about it it was sci-fi but at times it felt like sci-fi horror or, or thriller there was such a level of magic into that film you know it was dark but there was wonder it was a world to be a part of and there was like memorable action sequences you know for a film that focused uh, way too much on action and adventure, you don't really walk away thinking of like a lot of action scenes for some reason. So yes, this film has plenty of plot holes. A lot of questions go unanswered. Like one that a lot of people are pointing out and I walked out of the movie asking myself this too is, they say Sarah Connor received the Terminator when she was nine years old. Like it was just a birthday party. Here's your Terminator. So yeah, she gets this Terminator. They, they don't know who sent the Terminator back and um, they never fucking tell you by the end of this movie. So it's a big, like, left... I felt like the writers didn't even know. Sure, it could be something they're saving for the sequel, but you know when in movies where they go, you don't want to know. Like, if they get asked a question, and it's like... I feel like the writers, a lot of time, they don't know. Don't get me wrong, this film is definitely not boring. Like, in terms of a fun summer action-adventure flick with some cool sci-fi in there. In that sense, I really dug the film. It's fast-paced, and even though there are plot points that feel a little convoluted, am I using that right? I don't know what that means. Ah, we're in a pickle. And at times, plot elements also feel like oh, overpacked. Is that what convoluted means? Damn, if only there was a dictionary available right here on this computer for me to use. I still really appreciated that this film tried doing something different, and they tried adding substance. Because I will say, the first half of this film, I enjoyed a lot more than the second half. The first half is the part of the movie that really deals around with messing with 1984. There's plenty of homage in the film, and that scene, I kept wondering how it's gonna look when they do it, but the scene when old Arnie is fighting young Arnie, it's pretty fucking believable, and the effects they did, and then knowing what clips to actually use, like, it blended in perfectly. <laughs> there was a good layer of mystery in the beginning. I really wanted to know what the fuck was going on, and I was like, I wanted to know. It wasn't like, come on, tell me. I just wanted to know. The last half of this movie is when the film tries too hard. I appreciate a film that's ambitious and is willing to try stuff, so I always, I always like the potential, at least. But the film, you know, left me feeling a little confused and feeling like it was a little overstuffed, or actually, like, really overstuffed. Like, one of the cool things about this film is that it's fast paced. So even though it's not the greatest film, it's at least fast paced. But that tends to work against it a lot of the time. If you watch Terminator 2, at the end of the film, a lot of people end up tearing up, including myself. It's always a single tear 
that lands right at the tip of my penis because I'm only sitting or if I have an erection. Don't ask me why I have an erection or the NXT in Terminator 2. That's because Terminator 2 had moments to slow down and it had time to really develop its story, really develop their characters like in an interesting fashion. I feel like this film got too focused on action and adventure when it had a lot of potential for some really strong emotional parts. For starters, I do like what they did with Arnold Schwarzenegger. They made him the guardian of Sarah Connor when she was nine and she even calls him Pops now. Pops. Who says Pops anymore? No one says Pops anymore. Pops? Is she a black girl from the 1970s? <laughs> oh my god. Joke. <laughs> John Connor in Terminator 2 had a father figure. I mean, this one, Sarah Connor, is, like, he's more than a father figure. He's, he's practically her father. And Arnold does a great job taking on the new aspects of the T-800, playing it with a straight face, sometimes with that weird smile he does which they cut out of Terminator 2. Did you guys know that? There's actually the special edition where he smiles, like the big smile, but they cut it out, they cut it out, but I'm glad they took more advantage of it. A little too much in this movie, but they took more advantage of it. Like it's funny because in the, in the commercials, old Arnie looked silly. It didn't look like it was really gonna work, but in the movie, I, I thought it worked. Like, I feel like a lot of movies would have made that mistake of, hey, let's get Arnold Schwarzenegger in it again, but he's old, so we gotta hide the fact that he's older. Instead of doing that, they really made it a, a, a cool addition to the type of Terminator. Because he says, I'm old, but not obsolete. I'm old, but I'm not obsolete. Ah, 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 ah. It's about as far as my Arnold impression goes. I did like Amelia Clark as Sarah Connor. I thought she gave a pretty good performance. She's badass, believably tough, and I felt her performance added a layer of depth to the character. Not necessarily the writing of the character. The writing of the character actually felt kind of two-dimensional. There was a little bit of depth that Amelia Clark did provide for Sarah Connor. And I'm bringing those two points up as to support my point about the fact that this movie had a lot of moments, a lot of things at play that could have been emotionally powerful. Like the relationship was the most interesting part to me, but I still left going, it could have had more depth. It was the best part of the film, yet it was missing a lot of it. Like in this situation, I would have liked to have explored the psychology of Sarah Connor a little bit more. That's what was cool about Terminator 2 with Sarah Connor, was you really get to see the psychology of this woman at play. Like she starts off fucking traumatized. She doesn't have to necessarily be tr like mistraumatized or something, but I felt like they could have done something much more with that dynamic of being raised by a Terminator. Jai Courtney um, as Kyle Reese, I've, uh, I've said this in several videos before, um, I, I don't like this guy. I, there's very few actors where I'm like, I've just seen them, like, it pisses me off for some reason, and Jai Courtney is one of those guys. I, I, don't ask me why. Maybe because he's made a lot of shitty films, but other than that, don't ask me why. He's really getting bagged on for his performance in this. Like, every critic I'm hearing is like, Jai Courtney sucks. Now, Jai Courtney, yeah, uh, he's pretty much a robot, but for Jai Courtney, already me not liking him, I could tolerate him for most of it. So he's improving in some ways. He tried. This is when Jai Courtney fans are like, fuck you, you don't even try to act. Yeah, he's very stiff and he, he sounds like he prepares his lines. There's really not much depth. Sometimes he just sounds fake. <laughs> I mean, I get why people bagged on him, but I, 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 it was passable. And that sucks because A, Kyle Reese is the lead of this story. B, Michael Bean as Kyle Reese was fucking memorable. Jai Courtney is so robotic and stiff the whole time. Kyle Reese is like, come with me if you wanna live. Like he's always like, he seems like a coke addict or something. Cause he's just on fucking edge the whole time. They do a lot of coke in the future. <laughs> Already not being that good, you got Jai Courtney and Amelia Clark and it feels like the chemistry is being forced now. It doesn't feel authentic. I could see him as protector of her, but not as like the romantic interest they had with each other. It's, you know, James Cameron was married to Linda Hamilton for a while and he filmed a scene of Sarah Connor having sex with Michael Bean and he was like grubbing her tits and shit. I don't know how a guy does that. I mean, that's just fucking weird. But I stray. And there's no excuse for why the chemistry is not good. In Terminator 1, Sarah Connor starts off terrified of Kyle Reese. By the end of it, she loves Kyle Reese. And so do we, Kyle Reese was awesome. Now you got them on screen together, they don't start off like she's 
scared of him or something. It's a different type of Sarah Connor, sure, but there still should have been that chemistry, especially in the scenes where it was obvious they were trying to make us feel like they were really attracted to each other. People are really bagging on Jason Clark. Um, if you haven't seen the trailers, this is apparently a spoiler for you because yeah, it is a spoiler because it happens like fucking an hour or something into the film. But they show in the trailers that Jason Clark becomes the evil Terminator that is gonna try to stop them. And, and people are actually bagging on Jason Clark's performance too. Personally, I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah, it, it was a little too villainous at times for me, but still, like, it's, he seemed like he was having fun with the role at least. And in the beginning, I could see how this guy is John Connor. He seemed like an actual leader. That was the problem that I have with John Connor and the other ones, is I never felt like this dude could actually lead a rebellion. I bought him as the leader of the rebellion when he was John Connor at the beginning of the film. Okay, I really like what they did with it. I, I thought that was a really cool concept to do that. But my issue with it is that it comes so late into the film, not like super late, but late enough when there's already a lot of shit going on. It doesn't give you time to really digest the gravity of this situation of John Connor being the Terminator. He seems like more of an annoyance that gets in the way of them doing the bigger mission. That's another one where I'm like, they could have made it work. Terminator 2 is a huge story. It's much more than just a Terminator has to protect John Connor from a bad Terminator. There's a much bigger story there. Yet, when the T-1000 was there, he was fucking scary, he was memorable. You were aware that he existed when other shit was still going on. He was the thing you really walked away from. When you got this kind of impact in there and they totally can all the kind of psychological stresses that could go on with Jai Courtney learning that John Connor is his son and then finding out John Connor is now a Terminator and Amelia Clark is learning that her son is a Terminator now. There's a lot of shit that could have gone wrong with that mentally, but Amelia Clark just seems pretty dead set on ki killing John Connor. So this movie had potential, and but for all the things that it lacks, I still feel it was better than the last two installments. Like it's fast paced, there's a lot of action, yet none of the action really is groundbreaking. It's entertaining when you're watching it, but you don't really walk away like going, Remember that cool moment in the action? That, that's that's true. And there were elements at play that I still enjoyed, even though I felt a lot of them didn't meet its full potential. I still enjoyed the fact that they were at least present. And I'm just a fan of the Terminator world. Like, uh, okay, with Terminator 3, I'm aware it's not a good film. Like, I'm totally aware. But if I just want to be entertained, I think it's a fun film. Terminator 4, Salvation, I thought was super fucking boring. I've seen it twice. Each time I watched, I watched it, I was just so fucking bored. It's not even entertainingly bad. It's just... It's just, a, it's, it's a piece of shit, like real shit, like smelly, fucked up shit from an elephant, man. You know what was crazy about that? That was the time where Christian Bale lost his shit at someone for doing bad DP work. You know what? He said like he was, I was channeling my John Connor for a lot of it. And then you watch the movie and you're like, you hear that, you're like, well, if you lost his shit, He's probably gonna give a really good performance, but no, it was like his worst performance ever. So yeah, I think this one does a lot better than those two. I like the homages that they throw in there, you know, like a little bit of Easter egg sort of. And if they decide to keep in this direction for an already planned unnecessary sequel, I think they could improve upon what the film failed to do. Then again, a lot of sequels don't do that. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of like testing out rating systems right now because I don't fucking believe in them. I think they're stupid, but people want them. By people, I mean subscribers. So you guys, I love, love you guys. Because of that, um, I, I will say the film is not good, but it's definitely entertaining. No, scratch that. See, this is why I can't see it. This is, fuck. There's parts of it that are good. Uh, never mind. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe to The Real Rejects and keep a lookout for my spoiler review. Uh, I'm gonna be doing it with YouTuber The Real Mr. Robinson. He does movie reviews and such. You should check it out because he's coming on the channel. And uh, yeah, so keep a lookout. Here's how you spell his name. Here's what he looks like. <laughs> you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Vine because if we get more followers, we can get product placement. That's right, more product placement. Trust me, I'm just casting this YouTube hook out into the water, reeling in the dough with the amount of product placement I'm currently getting. <laughs>
Uh, join Full Sail University. It's a good school.